Ladies and gentlemen, join us on an exciting adventure that began with an unexpected twist in 2000. Imagine having appendicitis amid the heat of the new millennium. I'm thrown into emergency surgery, where time appears to stop as doctors work. A apparently innocent question regarding cyproallergy sends a wave of worry through my veins among the preparations. I say, I don't think so, and am connected to an IV drip in the operating room, waiting for the unknown. But then, as if guided by an unseen hand, my life takes a major turn. Within the sterile pandemonium of the operating theater, I am unexpectedly taken to a dimension of love and tranquility beyond human description. My true self is revealed here, amid the tides of life and death. Dear readers, join me as I unravel the complex tapestry of my fate, to disclose the hidden truths and vital teachings. I will reveal the unfathomable depths of my transformative journey, a story that will stay with you long after the last word is spoken. Don't miss this chance. Immerse yourself in this riveting story and prepare to be changed. Share your thoughts and observations in the comments below. This tale needs to be told and remembered. Welcome to a unique revelation, everyone. Welcome to my truth revealing. The last memory etched in my mind is the doctor's soothing words assuring me that everything would soon be fine. Darkness enveloped my senses, rendering me unconscious. But here's the twist. I am Mr. Claustrophobia incarnate. Fast forward, and suddenly my name reverberates through the air, jolting me back to consciousness amidst pandemonium. Medical professionals are frantically shouting cold blue, administering shocking treatments. I snap my eyes open finding myself upright on the surgery table, yet failing to grasp the reality of my situation, a journey more spiritual than physical. Bewildered, I survey the chaotic tableau unfolding in the operating room. The cold blue team is in a frenzy, chaos reigning supreme. It resembles a surreal comedy, with me assuming the role of a detached observer. Glancing downwards, I observe my contorted form with an odd sense of fascination. Then a glimpse of my husband in another room triggers a perplexing thought. How am I witnessing this? Returning to the dark, chilly confines of my consciousness, I am devoid of fear. Contemplating my appearance, I visualize myself as a whimsical figure adorned in hues of blue and gold, a captivating spectacle. In that ethereal realm, enlightenment dawns upon me. Humanity's essence is love, saturating the world in its entirety. Simultaneously, a profound tranquility washes over me, unlike any sensation experienced previously. Absent is the agony that once plagued me, a stark departure from my tumultuous past marred by self-inflicted pain. My life's narrative has been one of solitude and perceived unlovability, stemming from my solitary days in the hospital, bereft of family visits. Amidst the expanse of the unknown, whether a starry expanse or an abyss of darkness, an overwhelming affection for humanity engulfs me, a revelation startling for someone who has long embraced hermitage. No celestial beings, no radiant light, merely an aura of serenity that beckons as a perpetual sanctuary. In that fleeting moment, the prospect of an existence devoid of suffering, enveloped in eternal tranquility, seems inviting a cocoon suited for a recluse's lifelong retreat. Time's fleeting embrace abruptly shatters, thrusting me into the confines of the ICU. Yet, the darkness persists, the operating room fading into obscurity, replaced by a velvety abyss, a realm of unparalleled comfort. Fearlessness pervades, yet my name echoes incessantly, rupturing the serenity. Resisting the call, I cling to the tranquility, only to be ensnared by the clutches of my claustrophobia. It's not an out-of-body revelation, rather a stark realization of my struggle to breathe. As dawn breaks on the following day, the IQ doctor pays a visit, recounting the chaos I incited in the operating room. I narrate the surreal spectacle, including the nurse's inadvertent mishap with the instrument tray. You and the doctor exhibited impatience towards her. Suddenly, a man strides in, stumbles over the nurse, and peers down at me with an air of intrigue. I'm left pondering his motives. I don't understand how you could be aware of what transpired in that room, he remarks. My response is simple. I can't explain it. It's just what I witnessed. Recollections of you berating the nurse linger in my mind, perhaps tempered with an apology by now. The details remain unclear. With a lingering gaze, the man exits, 
marking the conclusion of my near-death encounter. The hospital stint left an indelible imprint on my self-perception. My inherently reserved pish in nature didn't exactly position me as the life of the party, a sentiment reciprocated by those around me. Sensing their discomfort and disregard, I adapted my demeanor to conform to societal norms. Upon discharge, an encounter with a seemingly invisible young girl left me contemplating if she had appeared to bid me farewell. This ordeal catalyzed a transformative shift within me. Gradually, I embraced a newfound ease in social interactions, recognizing our shared humanity and my capacity for compassion. We are all spiritual beings navigating the complexities of existence. Viewing individuals through a spiritual lens, I acknowledge their innate resilience in traversing life's obstacles. From evading eye contact to engaging in warm conversations, a departure from my prior disposition. Before reaching the age of 50, such behaviors were alien to me. Yet, post my brush with mortality, acts of kindness and empathy effortlessly flowed forth, revealing an unexpected aptitude for nurturing others. It proved to be a pivotal juncture, granting me a sense of liberation. The purpose behind my return, albeit unintended, crystallized with the arrival of my son. Tragically, a decade later, his untimely demise inflicted profound anguish. Nevertheless, my near-death experience provides solace, reassuring me of his tranquil state, unburdened by life's tribulations. A spiritual connection persists, manifesting in subtle occurrences like flickering lights. The loss of my son constitutes the most grievous blow, yet the knowledge of his serenity offers solace. Surprisingly, I endure, anticipating the day when I may reunite with him. Despite enduring a lifetime punctuated by surgeries since childhood, followed by their subsequent unraveling, I remain resilient. Numerous surgeries and blood transfusions punctuate my journey. Enduring agony is offset by the anticipation of a sublime denouement. Each day, I strive to cultivate personal growth, extending care and compassion to others, even amidst personal turmoil. Our existence is intrinsically intertwined with the support and upliftment of one another. Though pain lingers, I eschew further surgical interventions, content with the wisdom gleaned from my brush with death. Recognizing the omnipresence of love, I reaffirm our intrinsic significance within the tapestry of existence.